When the Catholic White Fathers arrived in Uganda in 1879, they had to grapple with many challenges. Besides the fact that Christianity had made a late entry to Uganda compared to the rest of Africa, the White Fathers could not speak the local language. For the first converts, liturgy was a mix of French and Latin Christian cultures. For instance, the priest faced the altar at all times during Mass and communicated almost everything through song. Catholic liturgy featured slow tempo beautiful plain chants or canticles by priests in Latin and this could have excited some converts. The converts crammed some of these songs and lines from recitations by priests in Latin without much regard to the meaning. This kind of music evoked spiritual emotion and devotion. Father James Kabuye, who has been a Catholic priest for 53 years, remembers the Catholic chants before and after he was ordained priest. Uh, that's why we are seeing the Kyrie, or if you know, you know these words, Kyrie, Gloria, Sanctus, uh, Annus Day. Oh, we are seeing that, but in Latin, can you imagine? People learned those things here in Latin. At the time, priests were supposed to speak Latin, which is not common lately, except among his father James Kabuye's contemporaries. The Second Vatican Ecumenical Council started in 1962. The same year was ordained priest. Earlier, then Archbishop of Lubaga, the late Joseph Chiwanuka, instructed an African music legend, Joseph Chagambi Dua, to start African music with a view to seeing how it could be used in the church. Father Kabuye was Chagambi Dua's student. He learned from him how to write, read, and interpret African music. But the songs could not be sung in church until the groundbreaking decision of the Second Vatican Council in 1964. This was the opportunity for Father Kabuye who could compose pieces in Luganda. A song to be sung in the church is not just to, to pick a, a secular song and put a words or, or you can read just words and say it is a church music. No. The challenge was how to make music in a local language as appealing as it was in Latin. An idea then struck Father Kawiyo. He would compose music that was not far from the original Catholic Latin canticles, but with a slightly faster tempo. His pieces until now have a responsorial touch, which requires the congregation to sing a short and easy to memorize refrain, and then verses done by a chief singer called a cantor or the choir. Uh, he composes and as if you are in our local, uh, our local setting. Like if you listen to a song like Mugulewo, Mugulewo, Yezuatuse, Haingire, like you are like at home welcoming visitors. Atenderezango, Mokamo, Budebona, Etender, Mekama, Kanga, Bridio, O Moyo, Kanga, Queen, you made them Mokama, Abet was ever would live as a new key. Kabuye composed several pieces that were adopted by the church. Other priests, Expedito Magembe and Vicente Vakabulindi, would later throw in their weight. The Uganda region became the first to adopt a local language in liturgical music. In the following years, the late Monsignor Bonaventure Kasaija composed many of the liturgical pieces in Runyoro Rutoro Nyankore Ruchiga. In the 1970s, there was a heated debate on whether to use local instruments in the church as opposed to organs which were a preserve of seminarians. Finally, local instruments were accepted, giving local music a full revival. Kabuye's music is routine in church for all types of mass. Recently, he self-published a book about Shiganda music. I wrote this book in order to teach other people how to write it at this music, how to understand it, and how to read it. He heads the Interdiocesan Music Committee, which is responsible for adopting and publishing Catholic liturgical music in Uganda. With more than 500 compositions to his name, 
the 82 year old is still an active priest and composer based in Chiyinda Mitiana Diocese. Frank Walisimbi, NTV Talking Arts. Thank you.